I'm Seth Long, and here at WSU, I'm working on research to automatically find the differences between two categories of MRI scans of the brain. An MRI is a three-dimensional image, which we can view as a series of slices, for example, this sequence from side to side. The system starts with two categories of image, for example, older than 60 or younger than 40, as pictured here. First, area outside the brain is cropped away from the image. Next, the image is subdivided into eight subdivisions, of which we can see four in each of our two-dimensional images. These subdivisions form a tree, with a root node branching out eight directions. Each of the subdivisions may be subdivided again, although we limit the maximum depth of the tree in order to provide some bounds for the procedure. If any subdivision is of uniform color, for example this subdivision which is completely outside the brain, it will not be subdivided again. This causes the shape of the tree to reflect the shape of the brain. Next, the WSU High Performance Computing Cluster is used to search for branches which are common in one category and rare in the other. The discriminating branches can be used to classify images that the system hasn't seen before, and this is a good way to test them. For the age distinction of greater than 60 versus less than 40, the system is right 91.3% of the time. The colored boxes indicate areas represented by discriminating branches. Distinguishing people with more than four years of higher education from those with none, the system is right 84.3% of the time. It's right 70% of the time distinguishing people with Alzheimer's from healthy individuals of the same age group. Most of the discriminating branches represent areas around the ventricular system in the center of the brain. The ventricular system is known to increase as Alzheimer's disease progresses. There are a number of other categorizations discussed in the poster. For example, the system can get socioeconomic status right about two-thirds of the time. There are also a lot of categorizations that haven't been tested. For example, people who are likely to become alcoholics versus people who aren't, or career criminals versus law-abiding citizens. The real purpose of the system, however, is to automatically discover structural changes in the brain. So, if a researcher were looking at a new neurological disease, the system could be asked to differentiate between people recently diagnosed and people who had had the disease for a while. The structural changes would show up in the discriminating branches. I'm Seth Long, and thanks for watching.